Uh, well, I'll start by asking, I mean, the, the Snow Queen was a, a story that Walt Disney was himself desperately trying to get off the ground and sort of never managed to do so. You must be absolutely thrilled that you finally got this, this story up on the big screen. I, we are, we are. And I, I'm hoping that, you know, Walt would be proud of yeah. what we did. <laughs> You know, we took some liberties. We surprised him a bit, story. I think, with some of our choices. But <laughs> but he took liberties. You know, I always like the idea. He took liberties with Pinocchio in that, uh, which is one of my favorite films. But in the book, Pinocchio squashes Jiminy Cricket in the very first chapter, and was, <laughs> I can't imagine that in the movie. So um, you know, we yeah. took some liberties too. And there was a, a research trip to Norway in the build-up mm -hmm. to this. Was that something that you both were able to go on? No. We no. wish. Yes. No, we, we didn't get to go we, to Norway. Yeah, no. I actually had just started on the project, um, and the whole art department was went to Norway, and I was like, when do I get to go to Norway? And they said, well, they're there right this minute. It's <laughs> like, okay. But, um, you know, you know, we were really working on the story, but uh, they, it was unbelievable um, what they brought back. Uh, it was, I mean, every detail of the film, I feel, it, it feels like we went because... It does, it does. Yeah, it. they brought so much back, and we, we also brought in... Um, Experts on, on, on Scandinavian culture, ex linguists, we've got Old Norse in the film. We you know? do. And it, and it, it was just... all that research. I mean, we were inspired by everything that they, visually that they brought back. Mm -hmm. um, and the look of the architecture, the stave churches, the rose mauling, which is folk art, Norwegian folk art. The fjords. And the fjords and, and yeah. the epic sort of scale to the landscape, everything. Mm -hmm. So that really was a huge, mm -hmm. huge um boost to us and even the music the and Joking, then singing yeah. there's yoiking and cuning so there's so many things in the movie that uh that we were inspired by mm -hmm. even though we're not saying it's exactly norway it is a fictional you know land land arendelle but uh, definitely inspired a lot by norway and did they bring you back any souvenirs <laughs> the, you know the, the little the, troll thing little, little troll then there was that gorgeous coat um the sami coat that, um, oh, right. that oh, Mike right. brought, um, and uh, which inspired a lot of Kristoff's um, look and, and, and his background. But then music, they brought that song. They found this CD yeah. that, um, in this little gift shop, uh, and it, uh, it's in the movie. We, we did a version of it. We yeah, actually it, went back to Norway and got a choir to, to redo it, but it's in the very opening of the movie where the snowflakes are falling, and it's just beautiful. It very transports you, you don't know where you're going, and but yet it's very Norwegian, yeah, so that's great. a lot of stuff. And, and the film sort of staying true to sort of Hans Christian Andersen's style, it's very enchanting, very magical, but also quite dark, and there's a kind of yeah. unpredictability to it. Yeah. Was it quite tough to strike that balance and be dark enough for the kids to still be able to enjoy, and then not quite schmaltzy enough for the parents to sort of be. <laughs> That's always yeah, a challenge. You're always working on that balance. To find that, the, the tone of the movie, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to go too scary, too dark with the whole thing. You don't want to go too light with all of it either. So we're always trying to find that balance. But what we, we were, are striving to do with all of our movies uh, is to entertain everyone, you know, from the youngest to the oldest, mm -hmm. and um, and that's a real challenge. But it's always something that we're, yeah, we're think, working on. You know, the the to me, it's if you if you use the characters, it's through the characters. You can um, laugh and cry with them if you feel for them, if they're relatable, mm -hmm. if they're interesting. Um, and so we just really kept saying, if we go back to that, we'll find that balance of of light and dark and humor and and emotion. Um, and then, and, and yeah, yeah, that, that kind of guided us. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Olaf for a minute because he's a fantastic <laughs> creation and he's just, I mean, I'm hoping that he could be to a new generation of kids, what kind of Jiminy Cricket was to me, or Timon and Pumbaa or something. He's been a real hit. You must have had a lot of fun sort of crafting that. He was, he was a blast was, from the beginning. We, yeah. we knew that just the snowman character that could fall apart and put himself back together and be fine was great. The thing that we, we worked on, and Jen was good about this, is really making sure that Olaf had a reason for being in the movie, not just being funny, but mm -hmm. an emotional mm -hmm. reason, and that is, you know, the, the girls, Elsa and Anna, make Olaf when they're very young, and he's not magical yet, but they they have designed him a bit, mm -hmm. and um, and yet, you know, when he does come to life and Elsa creates him later, um, he's a reminder of that relationship, that when things were good between the two that of them. That innocence. And, yeah. and and that youthful innocence. And they so. have a lot of fun with with that youthful innocence. And you know he's got a bit of a toddler walk, and he's you know he he can say things that kids would say, 
and uh, and you buy it, you know. <laughs> the animators had a ball. There were times yeah. that we had to say, okay, in this scene, let's keep the head on this time. Yeah, Maybe for he once. doesn't have to have it fall off. Yeah. <laughs> so. And uh, yet we have, with Anna, we have yet another sort of really strong, yet quite flawed kind of leading female character following on from the likes of Tangled mm -hmm. or Brave, for example. How important is it that young girls in particular have these kind of characters to inspire them? Well, I, I, I'm I really excited about it. I think, you know, I I, I love, um, you know, the Disney films of the past and, and that we grew up with, but they were of a different time. And I think, you know, Kristen Bell um, and Chris and I had a lot of conversations about this. Kristen Bell plays Anna. And the idea of, like, always looking for that girl that is more like us, you know, talks too fast, messes up a bit, and yet can still be inspirational. And, and, um, and I, you know, and with Elsa, we wanted that too. And, you know, a lot of people live in, kind of fear who they are, what makes them different or special, and and being allowed to explore that. Um, it was, yeah, it was from the start very important. We're really excited about it, and I, I have a 10-year-old daughter, and, you know, I'm really excited that I can give her this film. Because, uh, Jennifer, I read that you're the first female director of any animated Disney production. I would, yeah. Is this a sign of things to come, do you hope? Oh, definitely. I mean, we have great... Uh, um, Lauren McMullen uh, directed the short. We have Stevie Warmer. We have wonderful women coming down the pike. A lot more women are in animation, so... A lot of story I'm, artists, a lot of, a lot of animators. story artists, animators, so I'm, I'm honored that I and feel lucky it worked out um, for me. But yeah. um, I think it is a sign of things to come. I'm really psyched. So just my final question is that the songs are incredibly catchy and are real, they're, they're fantastic and really easy, you know, you remember them so much. I'm just wondering, because that's kind of out of your hands, that part. Is it quite worrying when you just leave it? <laughs> it's not, it's no. not out of our hands. <laughs> yeah, it's, no. it's amazing. No, they are, we worked with um, uh, Bobby <laughs> Lopez and Kristen Anderson. Kristen, we worked with Bobby Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez, our songwriters, every day, every two day. hours in the morning. They were in New York, we were in LA, video conferencing. Yeah. But always talking about how the songs are going to propel the story forward. We never wanted to just stop the story and let a song play out and then continue the story. Mm -hmm. and they're great storytellers, so it all has to weave together. And yeah, so I would I would constantly rewrite scenes based on their songs, and we have several songs that didn't make it into the film, and they would rework the songs to fit with the scene. So it was a wonderful collaboration. I mean, they're 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 a big part of the story. Um, as and you know we, we had pushed, a, a lot of involvement in the song so they pushed us we pushed them there was a lot of back and forth yeah, to really make though. the songs as, as as strong and memorable and um, yeah the best partners that we possible. could have had it was yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today thank you. Much thank, you. thank you thank you